welcome back. So we know we're getting to that part where I'm going to be talking about how teachers can foster a growth mindset. And um, we've talked about Dweck's research on growth mindset and fixed mindset. And I'm going to use a related theory. Okay, remember uh, Dweck got her ideas from motivation and brain research. So I'm going to be focusing more on the motivation part. And her work is, um, is uh, aligned with the, the theory that I'm going to be sharing with you. So going back, so can teachers give um, foster uh, a growth mindset? Clearly we can by the way that we set up our classroom, um, the way that we provide feedback to one another or to our students. So um, how do we do that? Good feedback from teachers can foster growth mindset by shaping students' attributions. So here comes the other motivation theory, attribution theory. But before I do that, I want us to remember that humans um, are people that like to see make patterns or define patterns in things, to make sense of it. So that was sort of the basis of social cultural learning theory. It is also the basis of attribution theory. We search for a cause for why something bad happens to us. We want to find the pattern. We want to know what, you know, if we're out on the field trying to hunt and we didn't catch our prey, what is the reason why we didn't do it? Um, if we tried to ask a person out on a date and they turned us down, why, what is the reason why that happened? If I'm doing a math test and I didn't do well on that, what is the reason why that didn't happen? So um, according to attribution theory by Bernie Weiner, we tend to do this especially when bad things happen to us, but we do it also when good things happen to us, but especially when bad things happen to us. We need to know when these mistakes happen, when these problems happen, how do we begin to avoid them in the future? So we may make attributions in order to determine how our behavior should be in the future. So according to uh, Bernie Weiner's research, when, and I'm just narrowing it down because this is a robust theory that explains how, you know, whether or not we get dumped on by our boyfriends or girlfriends, or if we lose our jobs, or if, um, you know, you know, we get a speeding ticket, whatever it is, whatever happens, we, we make attributions. But I'm going to narrow it down uh, as to when things happen in the school situation. So when poor performance, if I'm a student, and I have um, performed poorly on a school assignment, what attributions can I make it up to? And there are five, no matter what the situation is, whether or not it's school or dating or marriage or work or surfing or whatever, it's these five generally. So for poor performance in school, I'm a student, I can attribute it to I have lack of ability. I'm just not good at it. I'm dumb. Or I can attribute it to lack of effort. You know what? I just didn't really study. I didn't put in the work. Or I can attribute it to a lack of good strategy. You know, I, I studied, but somehow I'm not using the right strategy to, you know, to solve these problems. I think that's the problem. I'm not revising my work or whatever. Or I can attribute it to lack of luck. You know, I wasn't lucky. It wasn't my lucky day. The full moon was out. Or the task was too difficult. Or the teacher was mean. So clearly, of, of these five, two are better. According to what we've learned about the brain and about how learning occurs, we know that effort and strategy are better attributions to make, even when things go bad. So I would want to say 
that if I did poorly on a school assignment, it's either because I didn't study or I didn't use the right strategy. And the reason why it works is because when I encounter a similar situation in the future, if I'm, you know, I know that a test is coming up and I knew that the last time I didn't do well because I didn't study, well, guess what? I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to study for the next one. Or if I, you know, think that it's because uh, I did poorly on the test because of lack of a good strategy, then when a new test is coming up, I'm going to say, well, I'm not going to let that happen to me again. I'm going to talk to the professor or talk to the teacher and get what is the most appropriate strategy that I can use so I can do better on this particular test. So um, if I make those two attributions to effort or good strategy, then I'm more likely to change perhaps the outcome um, in future events. But more importantly, I'm likely to engage in it. But if I attribute it to ability, if I say that my poor performance was due to my lack of ability, what can I do? I just don't have it. So future events, I may try to avoid those events. I'm not going to try it. I'm going to give up. So a lack of ability is really bad. Effort and good strategy is good. Also, it works the same way for when I do well on assignments. I can attribute it to either high ability, I'm just all that and a bag of chips, or I can do it to, I can say that it's because I worked really hard, I stayed up all night, and I really, really focused, or I could attribute it to um, using a good strategy. You know what? I talked to the professor and I really got a good strategy. I know what to do to do well on this and it worked. Um, or I just got lucky, the moon was out. Or the task was so easy, man, that was just so freaking easy. You know, clearly of these five, effort and good strategy are good for the same reason. For when I encounter a similar task, I feel like I can be successful at it, equally successful if I continue to, to use effort or I continue to use good strategy. So attributions that promote good or growth mindsets are those that focus on effort and strategy use. Um, and these are important because of three things that it tells the student or anybody in any circumstance. One is that the situation can be controlled. Okay, you can do something and it can be changed. <laughs> you know that the outcome can be changed. So if you failed one time, you don't have to fail again. You can actually do something better the next time. So you can control what, you can do something and you can actually make it better and it fosters responsibility. Heck, you need to do something. I need to do something. I need to take responsibility for what just happened. I can't blame it on the teacher. I can't blame it on the moon. I can't blame it on luck. I can't even blame it on my own ability. I have to blame it on whether or not I work hard on it. So these are the three things. Controllability, um, the fact that you can take responsibility and the fact that it can change. All right, and let's bring back the brain idea. So we know that when learners, um, when learners need to, or learners need to make mistakes and learn how to overcome them in order to achieve and learn. So basically we need to bring that into our classrooms. Um, just a little side note, I know that um, I was talking to a, a teacher at an elementary school and she constantly wants to just only focus on students who do well. So when they have a whole class discussion, she's always looking for those students who have the best examples. Um, and I'm always, always asking, well, why? You know, we can learn so much when we make mistakes. Why not call? on students who have the 
um, wrong answers. And like, well, I don't want them to feel bad. And I'm like, they're not going to feel bad. Depends on how you sell it. If you create a growth mindset environment, then you can celebrate that as an opportunity for learning because we all make mistakes, right? So it's like, yay, we made a mistake here. Let's learn from this mistake. Um, I'm going to put a video on blackboard that i really want you to watch it's it's very insightful it'll give you some ideas um, it will talk about carol dweck it will have carol dweck in there um, so take a look at it and you'll you'll see some of these ideas these themes come out so i'm going to end the the screencast here come back for the next part we're going to talk about ooh, uh, um, um, some more of this stuff